Good day grade 11s. Welcome to your next lesson on equations and inequalities. In this lesson we're going to be actually looking at applying what we've learned so far to word problems. Now why do we do this? Because they're actually real world applications. If you think of computer programming and you think about your flight simulators, your computer games, your modeling the effects of of population growth or even just modeling air pollution. All of these things are basically using quadratic equations to model different things to find the solutions or to find the effects of it. So all of this is using your quadratic equations and in this lesson we're going to be looking at some very simple word problems and start getting you thinking about how you can use maths to model real life problems. So First of all, we need to think about how to solve a word problem. First of all, we need to read the problem carefully. If we don't read that problem carefully, we don't get the facts, and if we don't have the facts, we can't solve anything. Next, we're going to highlight what we have to solve for. We're going to assign variables to what we need to know. We're going to translate it into an algebraic expression and then write out a system of equations. We're going to solve those equations and then we always, always, always have to check the solution. And then finally, we're going to write out the final answer. Now, it seems very long and tedious, but what we're doing is just showing you basic steps on how you would normally do, uh, what you would normally do to solve a word problem. So now, let us look at a couple of word problems to make sure you know how to do this. So let's start at the beginning. It says the difference of two numbers is 10. So the difference, the difference of two numbers is 10. And the sum of their squares is 50. This is find the two numbers. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let the two numbers be x and y. Right, so my two numbers are x and y. We don't know which one's bigger or smaller. It makes no difference at this point in time. Now it says the difference of the two numbers is 10. Difference means subtraction. So we can say x minus y equals 10. That's equation 1. And then it says the sum of their squares is 50. So the sum of their squares is 50 and that's equation 2. Now to solve for this, probably the easiest way to solve for this is to substitute, to find, make one of these two variables be the subject of the formula here and then substitute it into this one. So let's do that. I'm going to solve for x, so I'm going to say x is equal to 10 plus y and I'm going to call that equation 3. You don't have to ch choose x, you can choose y as well, it makes a difference, it's going to work out to be exactly the same, trust me I know I've done this before. So if we now, what we're going to do is we're going to sub in, we're going to sub in equation 3 into equation 2. That means wherever we see an x we're going to write 10 plus y. So this becomes 10 plus y squared plus y squared is equal to 50. And now we need to multiply that out. So 10 squared is 100 plus, plus 10y, plus 10y becomes plus 20y, plus y squared, plus now we bring this y squared down, and I'm going to say, okay, equals 50. Then let's add up all the like terms. So we've got y squared plus y squared is 2y squared. That's plus 20y plus 100 and then let's bring everything onto the left hand side so we go minus 50 equals 0 so we got 2y squared plus 20y plus 50 equals 0 now I know that is a quadratic awesome but what do you always do when you're factorizing? You always first look for common factors. So therefore we're going to go that's y squared because y, I'm taking out my 2. There's a 2, that's 20. 20 is divisible by 2. 50 is divisible by 2. So I'm just dividing everything by 2. So this becomes y squared plus 10y plus 25 equals 0. And now we can factorize. And it's much easier to factorize if the coefficient of the y squared is just your 1 because then you've got y and y. Now if we look at this quadratic, remember our little tricks? The plus here tells you both the signs are the same and this plus tells us that they both are positive. So it's plus and plus. So we want factors of 25 that when we add them together they get us 10 and when we multiply them give us 25. 
and the most obvious factors of 25 is 5. So 5 times 5 is definitely going to give me 25 and 5 plus 5 gives me 10. So awesome, your y plus 5, y plus 5 equals 0. Therefore, y equals minus 5 or y equals minus 5. Now obviously we don't have to repeat this a second time because they're the same. But I haven't finished because it said find the two numbers. So what am I going to do? I need to solve for my x. Now you can either substitute into this equation or you can substitute into this equation. I'm going to substitute into this equation because x is my subject of my formula. So I'm going to go x equals 10 plus minus 5. Therefore x is going to be 5. Now, what are we going to do? We're always going to check. We're always going to check our solution. So let's substitute into equation 2 to check. So we've got x squared plus y squared equals 50. That's what they say. So let's do our left hand side. And the left hand side is x squared, which is 5 squared plus y, which is minus 5 squared which is 25 plus the minus times the minus of the plus is again 25 which equals 50 so yay it works awesome right grade 11 so let's look at this question a farmer has a goat enclosure which has an area of 12 square meters if he increases the length by 5 meters and the breadth by 1 meter then the area of the enclosure is three times larger and it says what are the original length and breadth so I'm going to let the length, the original length, be L, and let the breadth, the breadth equal B. Okay, so now if we draw this, if we draw this, the original one, we have this, this is the breadth, this is the breadth, this is the L, this is the L, right? And that area there, the area is 12 square meters right so therefore we know that b times l is equal to 12 and that is our first equation now the farmer increases it he changes the size so what he does is he increases the length by 5 meters so increases the length by 5 meters and he increases his breadth by 1 meter so what he does is he makes it that this becomes L plus 5 and the breadth is now B plus 1. And now the area is 3 times larger. So it's 3 times 12 which is 36 meters. So now he has that the length plus 5 times the breadth plus 1 is equal to 36 meters and I would say that is equation 2. So the best thing for us to do now is to substitute one of these variables into this just like we've been doing before and then solve. So the first thing we need to do is make one of these variables the subject of the formula. So I'm going to go back to that color there and I'm going to say okay fine let us solve for B. So therefore B is equal to 12 over L. Okay, happy? Now we're going to call that equation 3 and what we're going to do is we're going to substitute that into equation 2. So we're going to sub 3 into 2. Okay, so if we do that we've got L plus 5 and wherever we see B we're going to write 12 over L so what 12 over L plus 1 has to equal to 36. And before we do anything else now we have to multiply this out. So let's do that. So let's do it nice and slow to make sure we don't make any mistakes. We're going to go L times 12 over L plus 1 times L plus 5 times 12 over L over there plus 5 and that all equals 36 so 12 over L those cancel and you just left with 12 plus L plus 5 times 12 is 60 over L 
plus 5 equals 36. So let's group our numbers together. So we've got L plus 60 over L, 12 plus 5 is 17, plus 17 minus 36 equals 0. And now to get rid of this L at the bottom, I'm just going to multiply everything by L. Everything by L. Okay, so let's do that. So that becomes, where's my pen gone? There it is. So it becomes L squared plus 60 minus 19L equals 0. So therefore, our equation that we need to solve is L squared minus 19L plus 60 equals 0. Now if I think about this, okay, we need to think of whether or not we can get some factors that give us from 60 that give us 19. So our factors of 60 are, let's think about it, our factors of 60 are 1 and 60, we also have 2 and 30, we have 3 and 20, we've got 4 and 15, and there we go. The 4 and 15, when we add them up, give us 19. So therefore we've got L minus 15, L minus 4 equals 0. Therefore the L is equal to 15 or the L is equal to 4. And then obviously if we now substitute that in to our equation 3 and I'm going to change my color. Let's change it to the red again. No, let's not change it to red. Let's change it to green. I can say B is either going to be 12 over 15 or B equals 12 over 4. Okay? So therefore B is either going to be 12 divided by 15, which if we divide by 3 becomes 4 fifths, or B is equal to 3. So, if we think about that, if we want to work out our length and our breadth, either we've got a very long, thin piece of goat enclosure, or we've got a fairly decent side goat enclosure. Right, grade 11s, let's look at the next example. It says, Sylvester has played a few games of darts. Okay, in the third game, in the third game, Sylvester scored 80 more than in the second game. And in the first game, Sylvester scored 110 less than the third game. His total score for the first two games was 208. If he wants an average score of 146, what must be his score in the fourth game? Oh, my word. Okay, so let's go through this. First of all, we got games. And we've got the first game, the second game, the third game, and the fourth game. And it says he played a few games of darts. In his third game, Sylvester scored 80 more than his second game. So in his third game, he scored 80 more than in his second game, right? And the first game, he scored 110 less than the third game. So in his third game, he scored 110 less. So this was 3 minus 110, okay? And this is, 3 is 2 plus, okay? It says his total score for the first two games, the total score for the first two games was 208. If he wants an average of 146, what must he score on the fourth game? Sure. Okay, what must he score on the fourth game? So let's say we let the second game, the second game be X. Okay, so let's do that. And I'm just going to change color so we can see what we're doing here. So we're going to let that be, oh, that didn't work. Okay, I'm meant to change it to the blue. So if this is 
x. Do you agree? It says the third game he scored 80 more than his second game. So therefore, he knows that yeah, this bit here is going to be x plus 80. That is first game. Third game is x plus 80. He also says in the first game, Sylvester scored 110 less than the third game. So yeah, we know that the first game was 3 minus 110. But what is the third game? The third game is x plus 80. So therefore, the first game here is going to be x plus 80 minus 110. Therefore, that is going to be x minus 30. OK. So therefore, we have that the first game is x minus 30. The second game is x. Third game is x plus 80. And now it says his total score for the first two games was 208. So now we know that the score for the first two games was 208. So that means that game one plus game two had to equal 208. So what is the first game? The first game is x plus 30. The second game is x because we let it be x. So therefore we can say x minus 30 plus x has to equal how much? 208, right? So therefore we can say 2x minus 30 equals 208. Therefore 2x is equal to 238, we just solve it. And then x is equal to what is this? It is 1 and it goes 1 remainder 1, it's 119. Right, awesome. So now we know that x is 119. So therefore this makes life very easy because now we know what the different games are. We know that his score for game 2 was just x, which was 119. His score for game 3 was 119 plus 80 which was 199. His score for the first game was x minus 30, which is 119 minus 30, which is 89. 89. 89. Let me just write that down. And now they say, if he wants an average score of 146, what must he score for the fourth game? So now what we're going to say is, okay, let his fourth game score be y. Okay, and how do we find averages? We find averages by adding up all of them and dividing by the number we play. So the average, let me get another color so you don't get confused about all the different things I'm working on. The average is going to be the score of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all over 4 and they tell us that the average is equal to 146 he wants an average of 146 the score for the first game we worked out is 89 the score for the second game was 119 the score for the third game was 199 plus y which is the score for our fourth game and then we divide all of this by 4. So now the way we're going to get this to be solved what we're going to do we're going to times the side by 4 to get rid of the 4 and then add these all up and subtract from it. So we're going to go 4 times 146 is equal to and let's just get our calculator out and I just went past it so let's get it out. There we go. And we're going to add these numbers up. We're going to go 89 plus 119 plus 199. And that becomes 407. Okay. So we've got that equals 407 plus y. So 4, 4 is a 16, carry 1. I mean, 4, 6 is 24. Sorry, carry 2. 4, 4 is a 16, 17, 18. Carry 1. And then 4 and 1, that's 5. So it's 584 minus 407 is equal to y. And if we pop our calculator out again, we can just work it out. It's 584 minus 407 
equals 177. So Sylvester needs to get 177 for his fourth game in order to get an average of 146, which is possibly doable since he got 199 for his third game. Right, let's look at another example. An annual train ticket costs a thousand rand for a single person. So a single person, thousand rand. But it only costs fifteen hundred rand for a whole family ticket. Okay. The train ticket price for both the single person and the family are increased by the same amount. But now a single person ticket costs five sevenths of a family ticket. What was the price? increase. Okay, so let's write down this information. Okay, so a one person ticket, a one person ticket, okay, equals a thousand rand. Right? Then a family ticket, a family ticket, okay, equals 1,500. Okay, now they add the same amount of money to it. Okay, they increase it by the same amount. So they add X. So we're going to let the price increase be X. They add X to both. But now the relationship between them is 5 sevenths. Therefore, we can say that the one person ticket. Is now is now five sevenths times by a family ticket. That's what they're saying. So we can actually put that into an equation. We can say that the one person ticket, which is a thousand plus X, is equal to five sevenths. 5 sevenths of the family ticket, which is 1500 plus x. Okay, so now we have an equation where we can solve for our x. So we're going to do this by doing 1000 plus x is equal to 5 times 15, we've got 0, 0, 5, 5 is so 25, it's 7500 over 7 plus 5 over 7 times x. Let's put all the x's onto the one side and all the numbers on the other side. So that's supposed to be a thousand, sorry. So we've got a thousand minus 7,500 over 7 is equal to 5 over 7x minus x. We're going to multiply everything by 7 to get rid of the 7 at the bottom. So we've got 7,000 minus 7,500 is equal to 5x minus 7x. Therefore, I'm now writing over here, 7,000 minus 7,500 is minus 500 is equal to 5x minus 7x, that's minus 2x. Therefore, do you agree that if I divide both of these by minus 2, we get x is 250. Therefore, the price increase, the price increase was 250 rand. Okay, so you need to think about these things and draw them out. And if grade 11s, you find it easier to use pictures or number lines or something like that to help you draw it out, do it. Please do it. It's very, very important. Grade 11s, in order to do better at these types of questions, you need to wait for it. Practice. So please go practice, practice, practice. And then once you've done that, complete the assessment at the end of the section. Have a lovely day. Mm -hmm.